Ciao everyone, it's Alyssa coming at you with another slow fashion video. This week I am sharing some very easy and I think kind of fun ways that you can reorganize and merchandise your closet. Because if the most sustainable closet is the one you already have, then it's kind of important to actually see what you have and enjoy spending time in there getting dressed. So without further ado, let's jump on in. If you have to like part the seas every time you're looking for like a blouse, then you're never going to want to wear what you already have. So making sure that the space you have to store your clothes actually suits the size of your closet is number one. And I think it doesn't matter whether you are a minimalist or a maximalist and have a huge closet, there are a couple of ways that you can make sure you'll be able to see everything in your closet. The first one is go through a little bit of a declutter or a minimization process. I actually did a video about this, so I'm gonna link it up here uh, and in the description box below. The other thing you can do is store away any items that aren't in season and that you know you're not going to wear for the next three to six months. The other thing I would recommend is finding another space in your home in which to create your entire closet. Maybe this means you move it to a guest bedroom or a hobby room that you know you could easily convert. I don't know, I'm not gonna get into home decor. All of this is within reason, of course. For example, I don't wear evening wear enough to have to store it in my primary closet, so evening wear is put away in a separate closet. But as much as you can, I would say maybe 80% of your closet should be hopefully within eyeball and reaching distance. Another tiny tip is making sure that all of your hangers are the same. This can seem like such a small thing, but it really does make a difference, not only because it just looks nicer and more appealing, but it allows your clothes to hang the same way and be spaced out in the same way. Again, much like a retail store, you want to divide your closet into different sections. Before you go ahead and do this though, I think it's really important to take a mental check of what you wear most and put those items or those sections at the front of your closet. If you don't have a walk-in, put them starting from the left-hand side because the eye always travels from the left to the right. The way you choose your sections is going to be completely up to you and your climate and your style personality. But for example, I tend to wear separates more than I do dresses. So I have my blouses and button-down shirts hanging right away on the left and right below them any trousers or skirts that fit on the bottom hanger because those are the items I gravitate to most. After you've divided your closet into sections, then you can take it even further as a boutique would and then organize those sections in color and then within those color sections, organize those colors from dark to light. Or if it's summer, you can go from light to dark. Totally up to you. An extra section that I've created that I find most boutiques often have, it's like a little feature section at the front of the store that shows their newest arrivals. And so what I did is I purchased this little rack. It's just from Amazon. I know I probably should have purchased one that was like handmade but I'm not perfect. So I'll use this rack to either plan my outfits for the week ahead. Planning your outfits is such a huge component of learning to love what you have and get creative with what you have already. I also use it when I try to do those little challenges for myself. So whether it's, you know, I want to incorporate some more of my thrifted items in, or maybe there's a garment that I haven't worn in a while that I really want to start reintroducing back into my closet. I'll hang those items here because then they're front and center and they really really force me to think about them in the morning and get more use out of them that way. I think what's important to remember is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a whole feature rack. It could be as simple as a couple of hooks on a wall that you hang some featured items on or that's where you, you could hang your outfit of the day with one hanger. It really doesn't have to be complicated and it can suit all budgets. It's just more about the principle of having a little corner of your house where you can get excited about the clothes you already have. Keeping your go-to items at eye level is also really handy and this will depend on everybody's style personality and what they like to gravitate to most. For me, I'm a little bit more practical about it. Denim is often the base of my outfit so it makes my outfit building a lot easier when that first piece that I gravitate to is at eye level. I like creating little vignettes around 
different items. For example, with jewelry, I like putting together items that are both statement, trend, and forever jewelry. And I kind of group them together, either in little bowls or just hanging off of a little rack together, layered. That way it gets me kind of thinking on how I can wear and incorporate these pieces more easily, and maybe in ways that I never thought of. This can extend beyond jewelry as well. For example, if you have a set of shelves in your closet, or if you have room to purchase a set of shelves, I feel like I feel like shelves are never just shelves. There are these great opportunities to organize your clothes or create a beautiful little vignette. Gosh, I never thought I would say I would like shelves so much. I mean, it's such an arbitrary item, but whatever. Love shelves. Anything transparent for storage in the closet is key because then you can see right through it. For example, instead of just stacking knitwear on top of each other, which I find knitwear is so like floppy and loosey, it always it just ends up falling all over itself and creating a big mess, I would recommend grabbing some clear containers and folding your sweaters in such a way that you can actually see them either from the side when you're looking at them in your closet or such that when you pull the container out, if you're looking at it from the top, you can see every single sweater. I think that's a little bit of a Marie Kondo trick um, that you have your sweaters folded that way, but I think it's absolutely genius and uh, one last little organization piece that I have found incredibly helpful is organizing my drawers with dividers. And I only do this really with the smaller items like socks and pantyhose and underwears and bras because again, those, I don't know why, even with dividers, it's like those smaller items like jump around overnight and then when you open your drawer, it's a giant disaster. Still happens with dividers, but not as much. So again, it helps you find things quicker and makes your getting dressed process a whole lot easier. A couple of other more organization and less merchandising tips are really taking advantage of your vertical space. So instead of just having one rod hanging, I think it's so beneficial to have two. And if you keep the bottom of your closet clean, you can use that space additionally for footwear as well that is in season. Keeping the accoutrement handy. I couldn't find another word for this. So things like a stepladder if you have things that are high up that you need to reach. The one I have is really ugly, but whatever, it works. It means that I don't have to leave my closet to find something to wear and then bring it back. The more difficult it is to access something in your closet, the less likely you are to go ahead and grab it. So skip the morning marathon and get yourself a little stepladder or whatever it is you need to complete your look without having to run around your entire house or apartment. So things like a full length mirror, either keep it in your bedroom, near your closet, or within your closet is huge. That way you can quickly assess what you're wearing and decide yes or no. Other things that I find really handy are my little handheld steamer. Oftentimes, if I pick something up, it's got a little bit of a wrinkle. Chances are, if my steamer is sitting by the outlet and ready to go and it's always full of water, I'll be able to steam that little wrinkle out and not feel like I have nothing to wear and that I go out and buy something silly. Time is so, so precious. I don't think it's realistic to expect everyone to keep all their clothes ironed all the time. But making it easier on yourself will allow you to appreciate your garments more and wear them more. I also keep my lint roller on hand, safety pins, and double-sided tape. It's like, it's like my styling kit that I used to use on set, but now I've just brought it into my own closet. These are great little things to keep on hand. That way you don't discard an item just because it's not 100% perfect. The more you think that your clothing doesn't suit you or is dissatisfactory, the more you're gonna wanna go out and shop and buy things you don't need. It's really just a matter of making it super duper easy on yourself. Like, like having a little mini stylist gnome in your closet doing all these little things for you. Finally, make it pretty. Your closet doesn't have to be a walk-in. It doesn't have to be ginormous Kim Kardashian sized. I think there are little touches that we can add, like for example, putting your favorite clutch beside a stack of denim. Maybe you have room on your dresser to add a little vase of fake flowers or your favorite candle. It's these little thoughts that you can really add to your closet that don't have to cost a lot of money either. My entire dresser space has been entirely thrifted. I found this 
bamboo credenza for six dollars at a thrift shop. Other little things that you can do are add a little area rug so that your feet are nice and toasty cozy while you're deciding what to wear in the cold winter. All of those things seem so minor and trivial but I really think once you put them all together and you create a really beautiful space for you to get dressed in the morning or whenever you get dressed, uh, it can make a really big difference in simply valuing your clothes more and enjoying the process of getting dressed more. And I really do think that that's a huge part of building a more conscious consumption habit and a more conscious closet. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like this video with a little thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back next week with another slow fashion video. Thank you so, so much for watching and have a wonderful week ahead. Ciao!